Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about metabolic alkalosis. So let's get into it. First of all, what is it? So it happens when there is either a loss of too many acids, so hydrogen ions, or an excess of too much bicarb, which is HCO3. The body, of course, always trying to help itself, it tries to compensate by retaining CO2 by hypoventilation. So you're not breathing as much, okay? You're taking shorter, shallower breaths, and you're not taking as many breaths. There's two main kinds. There's chloride responsive and chloride resistant. And all this means is the chloride responsive is caused by the loss of the hydrogen ions. So too much acid is being removed. Examples of this include things like vomiting, so throwing up too much, and dehydration. And then for the chloride resistant, this is the one where there's too much bicarb. So the most common cause is the vomiting, is the chloride responsive. So excess vomiting too much, you're throwing up too much acid. Another chloride responsive cause would be something like oversuctioning, because it's the same concept, you're getting rid of too much acid. A chloride resistant example would be the overuse of certain medications like antacids, baking soda, diuretics, and laxatives. And something I did want to point out while we were talking about it, please do not take baking soda as a medication. I know that's kind of like an old school thing, stuff they used to do back in the day. Maybe your grandma told you about it, but please do not take a spoonful of baking soda if you have heartburn. Please use approved medications to treat those things. And then the other two causes can be something like hypokalemia, so not enough potassium in the body. And then genetic causes, maybe you were born with hyperaldosteronism. Now, let me share a memory tool with you to help you remember these. A way you can remember the causes of metabolic alkalosis is alkali. So the A is for aldosterone increased, so hyperaldosteronism. And the way that works is when your aldosterone is high, it causes the kidneys to hold on to salt, it holds on to the sodium, which causes a waste of hydrogen, so the acids, which in turn causes HCO3 or bicarb retention. So that's why hyperaldosteronism is a cause of metabolic alkalosis. L is for loop diuretics or the overuse of diuretics. K is for kalemia hypo. So hypokalemia, not enough potassium. A is for overuse of antacids, laxatives, diuretics, and baking soda. L is for loss of fluids. This is caused by excessive vomiting or GI suctioning. And then L is also for low potassium. So same as up here. And then I is for increased sodium bicarb administration. So that's a quick little way for you to remember the causes. Now let's talk about the signs and symptoms. Some signs and symptoms your patient might present with if they have metabolic alkalosis include bradypnea, which that would make sense, right? When we talked about the initial causes, the body tries to help itself by hypoventilating. So we might see that. Vomiting, right? That's one of the big causes is that loss of acid through vomiting and diarrhea. The patient might also have edema, so swelling of the periphery, the hands, the feet. They might be irritable or confused. If it's caused by a low potassium level, they might have other issues related to that, including tremors, numbness and tingling, cramping or muscle spasms, arrhythmias, which are of course very dangerous, twitching, like muscle twitching, and then even seizures. So these are some common things. The two big ones, right, though, are um, hypoventilation and vomiting. But they might experience these other things. Or some people are asymptomatic. They don't have any symptoms at all. So be on the lookout for that. How is it diagnosed then? A couple of things we're going to do. 
right? We want to do a good head-to-toe assessment. We want to see if they have any of this stuff going on. Well, of course, we're going to check their ABGs. And then we're going to do a UA, a urinalysis, specifically checking for the levels of chloride and potassium. And this is significant because it helps us determine what kind of metabolic alkalosis they have. Does they have the chloride responsive or the chloride resistant? So this is what's going to help determine that for us. If they have the chloride responsive, they need sodium chloride. So we will give that to them IV. That's a good treatment that's going to help them. But if they have chloride resistant, that would actually be bad for them to give them that, right? It can make things worse. It means they don't have enough potassium in their body. So what do we do? We give them potassium, right? Our goal here is to increase their potassium levels, usually through either pills or IV potassium. So that's why it's actually very significant that they check these levels to determine what kind they have. Now let's talk about our nursing interventions. Now these are gonna vary depending on what kind you have, if you have chloride responsive or chloride resistant. So what we have are a saline IV, right? We wanna hydrate our patients. They might need that. They might need potassium replacement if that's the issue. They might also need magnesium replacement. Of course, we wanna make sure they're well hydrated, so either oral fluids or IV fluids or both. We want to monitor those levels, those labs. So the chloride levels, the potassium levels, the ABGs, we want to keep a close eye on those. We want to assess especially the respiratory system. Yes, we're going to do a full head to toe on these patients, right? We're checking the GI system and everything like that. But the big issue here is the respiratory system because of that hypoventilation that they'll be doing. We need to make sure that they're still safe. We can either stop or decrease, doctor will, um, certain medications. So if the cause is like overuse or too high of a dose of antacids or laxatives or diuretics, things like that, the doctor might decide we're going to stop those completely, we're not going to give those anymore, or we're going to change the dosage. So make it not as much or make it less frequent, that kind of thing. And then the big one here, education for our patients. So depending on the cause, we need to let them know, if you are drinking so much alcohol to the point where it causes you to vomit, to throw up, that's too much. You need to decrease your alcohol intake or don't drink alcohol at all, right? Another one, if your patient is using laxatives for weight loss, right? That's very dangerous behavior. We don't want them to do that. It could put them into metabolic alkalosis. So letting them know, please don't do that. That's not good. That's not safe for your body. Also, if our patients have bulimia, so this is an eating disorder where you vomit, okay, where you throw up, or you do things like this, where you use laxatives for weight loss, things like that. This causes a lot of GI losses, a lot of acid loss, which can lead us to metabolic alkalosis. So good patient teaching about safety and the things that they should be taking, and if they're taking the meds, taking them appropriately. So that was my video on metabolic alkalosis. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you on the next one.